How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now today we're going to take a look at the Extra Fi H1, which is currently their top of the range gaming headset that is supposed to retail for $160, but currently on Extra Fi's website they list it at $99, which is honestly not a bad price compared to the H2s, which we reviewed a while back, which was also really good. But at the $90 price point, it was hard to recommend compared to a lot of the other really good gaming headsets below $100. So we're going to compare these two to each other as well, just spot the differences. And I'll let you guys know which one is the better buy. I can really say this one is a better buy, but also just go over all of the features for the H1. So let's quickly unbox the H1 and see what you get. Now, first, you do get a nice packaging. I always love unboxing a nice package headset or whatever it is. It just makes the unboxing experience so much more fun. So, firstly, you do have a read this before gaming. You do have your, looks like your manual. Then, when opening up, you do get the headset itself that does come out. And underneath, you do also get a bunch of other goodies. So, firstly, let's take a look at the other goodies you get. Firstly, you do get a extension cord that does go from to dual TRS to dual TRS females, male to male, just extension cable. It's probably around 1.8 meters long. I'm not exactly too sure about the length. Then you also get a USB DAC with to for the mic and also for your headphones. It's just always going to make the audio sound better with a DAC, so yeah, that is also nice. Then next up, we do also have the TRRS to dual TRS female adapter. Nice if you are on a console or on a mobile device, so on. Then next up, something quite interesting with this headset is that you do get two microphones. And I missed the, there you go, the wind muff. So for this headset, what's strange is because you have the option of two microphones, you can either have the casual mic or you can have the pro mic. So the only difference is between these, we are going to compare them, but the pro is more for if you're in a lively area, if you're at a LAN playing with your friends, or if you're at like a tournament and there's a lot of a background noise, this is where the pro mic comes in. It's going to have a better noise reduction and just make it sound a bit less like a firestorm is going on. Whereas the casual mic, it's more for at home, it's going to make your voice sound clearer, but also then pick up a bit more background noise. So if it's not too loud in the background, the casual mic is going to be the better option. But now let's quickly take a look at the headset. So first you do get an ex a non-detachable cable that is a braid and has this black and yellow pattern on. The cable is around, I believe, also 1.8 meters. Just confirm that later. No, it's definitely shorter. It's around 1.2 meters, I believe. And also, it goes from a to dual TRS for your mic and for your headphones. On the cable, you do have a control unit here that does allow you to adjust the volume and then also the microphone volume and you can mute the mic as well straight from here. Then, as for the headset itself, you do have a nice strong aluminum band here. Always a nice for that. I do believe this one was metal, not aluminum. So I think this one might be a bit lighter or it might just be black. I'm not exactly sure on my metals. But yeah, it is pretty durable, can stretch super wide, you don't have to worry about it breaking. I do love this design, we had it on the um, the HyperX Clouds firstly, I believe. I think they were the kind of the first ones that made that design. And then also uh, a lot more companies are moving into that design as well. We saw Logitech with their G headsets, G Pro headsets as well. And yeah, I just really love it. It looks a lot more uh, basic and the durability out of it, as you guys can see, is just really good. Now then, as for the headband, you do have your leather eye padding up here and some padding at the top. The headband isn't too heavy, so I, that shouldn't really be a problem. Now then, as for the ear cups, they are nice and large. I do like larger ear cups because I do sit 
completely over your ears. I don't like it if it's right on top of your ears. It gets annoying or irritating. It irritates my ears quite a lot. So having these is going to be a lot better. But you do have this more a brushed aluminum cover over the ear cups on the sides, whereas on the H2s, they were just plastic and just black. And as for the ear cups themselves, they are leather right memory foam and I honestly do prefer the the leather right foam compared to the cloth foam. For me, sometimes it does get scratchy on the beard and also it's just a lot softer for me personally, but that is going to depend on what you personally like more. As for putting it on, I can already tell it is a lot softer compared to the H1s. I do prefer these a lot more. Now, I usually also have a problem where my ears do scratch against the inside of the driver wall. That is not a problem here because the ear cups do go quite deep in. That's It doesn't scratch there and also it does have a quite soft padding or just cloth cover against the driver wall. But also it do, does feel really good. I don't really have any complaints so far. And yes, I have used these before, before this video. So I, I have tested them out and I know they are quite comfortable. So then comfort is really good with this headset. But now let's quickly get into sound quality. And then after that, we'll get into the two microphones because I'm kind of interested in hearing those out because I have not tested them yet. So we're going to use the DAC and then we're going to plug it into my Acer Predator here, listen to some music and then also get into a game and try it out. It's definitely loud, I can tell you guys that. And because it's so loud, you don't really hear anything in the background. I can't even hear my voice. But some people might like it a bit louder. I usually like around 50% or around there, 50 to 70%. And this is on max now. This is on max. Yeah. But you guys can also hear if there's any sound bleed going on. Can you guys hear? There might be sound coming out below here because it doesn't make a complete seal at the bottom. But honestly, can't hear anything around me. The highs are there. Miz is also present. And bass. It's not like crazy thumping up bass, which is nice, but it still has some power. It's really, it's, it's well balanced. And the stereo spread is also really good. I know because of the capsule that they have, the sounds does really sound like it's coming all around you. You can hear it from the back here, from the front. Stereo imaging is really good. All right, so now let's quickly try on the H2s and hear how they compare. Now, it does sound like the H2s has a bit more bass heaviness, but also the highs are still there. Now, I remember from my review, the H2s was very good sounding. And yeah, they, it's hard to compare so I almost want to say they sound a bit better than the H1s, but I'm not exactly sure. Because these do use 60 millimeter neodymium drivers. I think these are 48, so they're not the exact same driver. But I think they're so, so close. Alrighty, so as for the audio quality, now, I'm honestly not the best in Counter-Strike, but I have to say the audio quality is really good. You can, spatial awareness is superb. You can actually hear the footsteps from quite far away. This lobby is just full of bots now, but it does sound really good. It's loud, it's clear, and the gunshots, it's punching. Now this headset is mostly made for esports. It is in collaborating with Ninja and Pajamas, which is a esport organization. So you are, you know, you're, it's going to be more focused towards competitive uh, gameplay. And so far, I honestly don't have any complaints, especially at that one hundred dollar, ninety nine dollar price range. It sounds pretty good, and also the comfort is good. Now, if it was still at that, wow, at that one hundred and sixty dollar price range. It would have been much, much harder to recommend because then it does get into the price range of a lot of other headsets that's honestly really good. 
I just can't find anybody now. So I, I'm glad they did lower it. Now on the website it does state like it's in the second batch, which maybe this one is because other inclusions that that was included with this one, like the USB uh, USB sound card, that's only in in the second batch. I'm not exactly too sure what that means, but if it's lower down to that ninety dollars or uh, one hundred dollars, then it's honestly going to be a good recommendation that I can give it. Now you still find it on Amazon at 160 so hopefully they can lower it down there as well. But that also might still be on the first batch. Now then let's get into the mica quality comparison. So what I'm going to do is I do have my laptop here. I'm going to put it on max fan speed so it's going to be nice and loud. And also I have a Cherry Mix a blue keyboard as well. So we're going to hear how the Pro, Pro mic compares to the casual mic with the better noise cancellation. Does it is it actually going to make it worth it to use the Pro mic or is it just going to lower your voice sound quality? and if the mic just sounds good overall. Now then, I do like that it is a detachable mic, and again, that's why I don't like these as much. It gets caught on the table really easily with the controller more lower or in a in an awkward position here. But anyway, for the microphone, let's quickly do the Pro mic first. So all you need to do, it goes into the left ear cup, and there it is. Now you do have a wind Got a muff here if you want to use that, it's just going to reduce the pops. But now, let's quickly get everything set up and hear how it sounds. Now then, this is the Pro microphone and you guys can hear how it sounds if there's no background noise going on. This will be a bit of work in the background, but yeah, this is how it will sound in general. And maybe it sounds pretty good, I haven't listened back to it yet. But it also is on a max volume. Now you can add a bit more in post or well, well, in your Streamlabs or BS. But now let's quickly hear how it sounds if we do add some more background noise. So firstly, Cherry Mix a Blues or Gatron or Blues switches. How does that sound? And then now let's quickly turn on the fan on the laptop. And again, it does get quite loud. Probably be able to hear it through the mic there. But yeah, it does get quite loud. So Hopefully it cancels out a lot of the background noise. Again, I haven't listened back to it yet, but hopefully it does a pretty decent job. And if you are in a position where you do want to reduce your background noise, then of course this is going to be a better mic. But let's quickly move on to the casual mic now. All right, so this is now the casual mic without the noise cancellation built in. So how does this one sound? Does it sound better than the previous one? Now I'm also going to compare the noises and hear if it's actually any better. But this is how it sounds. Now you can move it further away, closer to your mouth. Uh, does it produce any popping noises when I just speak normally? But yeah, this is a mostly hard sound. Again, with no uh, extra boost applied to the microphone audio coming straight out of the mic. But now for the uh, Gatron Blue switches, does it add any background noise? Does it do an okay job compared to the Pro, which does have that noise cancellation built in? That is it. And that for the fan noise, let's quickly boost that up and hear how that sounds. And that is it with the... Uh, fan speed on a max and does it do a okay job does it do a worse job compared to the uh, pro mic does pro mic do a better job at noise cancellation because again you can apply noise cancellation inside like a discord inside uh, streamlabs uh, obs you can add more noise reduction inside the programs and i don't know does it actually do you still need a mic like this with noise cancellation built in? So, yeah. So then, in conclusion, what are my thoughts on the H1s? And how do they compare against the H2s? Now, honestly, sound quality-wise, they're so, so close. In some of the songs, I did prefer the H1s. They did sound a tiny bit fuller, but a tiny, tiny bit. But overall, I am going to give it towards the H1. The bolt construction just feels a bit better on the H1s. I do like the aluminum ear cups to add a bit more durability towards the headset instead of 
plastic and also because it's only ten dollars more that's honestly not a bad deal comfort wise i also prefer these over the H once just because of the leather eye padding again that's going to depend on what you personally like I would rather sacrifice a bit harder ears than scratching ears now if it was like a velour ear cups then that would have been a different matter but I'd rather take a leather right for those also covered my ears completely so spot on for comfort now then as for the microphones I did find that the casual mic of course it did sounded a tiny bit fuller as well you could hear your voice much clearer and the wrong way uh, but there wasn't that big of a difference i believe in the noise cancellation and especially because you can add noise cancellation towards uh, discord or some of your other uh, voice programs voice recording or streaming programs I'm not sure how this how much this one would be needed but if you get it for free yeah you can use it but overall the casual mic does sound better in my opinion and just add some noise cancellation if you wanted to but of course you can also for the for the pro you can add even more noise can noise cancellation i didn't test that but you can do that but yeah that's pretty much it for my review um do i recommend these over all of the other 100 dollars headsets it is so so hard these days because they are really good and i'm not sure if they're necessarily better than the others but i'm not exactly sure if the others are better than this one so it's going to be depend on what you like the most which brand you like the most for instance extra is and it's still a small brand they're coming up now and by supporting them you will be able to help them up to produce even better products in the future or more products which will be cool but yeah it's, it's hard because there's the logitech g pros there's the hyperx clouds there's so many at the 100 dollars price range also the, the krakens but i would maybe rather take these above the krakens so yeah it's, it's hard overall i would say just go for your favorite brand which one you want to support because they're all really good these days but anyway, that's pretty much it for my review of the Extra Fi H1. If you guys wanted to get them for yourself, I will leave links in the video description. But overall, a good headset. But thanks for watching, guys. I do hope you enjoyed it. Also, a bit of a, a different style. And I will check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.